I invite Sri M. M. Murugappan to deliver the convocation address. The solemnity of this ceremony is of often overwhelming, Mr. Director. I trust you will forgive my attempt to provide a little lively prelude. It's for the first time in my life I've been robed like this. And when I was robed by PhD students, and then finally I found this was fire engine red. And the only consolation was a friend and gentleman who invited me here. He was robed in grasshopper green. <laughs> you know, there was a great cartoonist, Gary Trudeau. I don't know if anyone has seen some of his cartoons. And he always said that graduation speeches were invented largely in the belief that outgoing students should never be released into the world. Outgoing students should never be released into the world until they have been properly sedated. Hopefully my message will not reflect such tradition. Thank you, Chairman, for sparing me a normal introduction. But I must tell you, in all the introductions that I've had on many occasions, I've written them myself. <laughs> and the only thing that people fail to say in such introductions is that I have one wife two boys, delightful daughters-in-law who are smarter than my boys. <laughs> so now for the serious part, Director, since you had such a wonderful and elaborate report. Director Bhim Raya Maitri, members of the faculty and staff, Chairman Jalaj Dhani, members of the Board of Governors of the IIM Tiruchirappalli, proud parents and family members, and grandparents, if there are any in the audience. Most of all, members of the graduating class, both the MBA program and the executive MBA program distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a rare honor and a unique privilege to stand before you this evening at one of India's finest institutions. As director and faculty, you've helped shape India's brightest minds. And as graduates, some of you are on the threshold of new careers, and some of you amongst the executive program are there to enhance your careers as well. You're armed with good education, which emphasizes not just academic excellence, but also content of character. Many congratulations to you all and to you, Chairman Dhani, for giving me this opportunity to share a few glimpses about my learnings in life. My thoughts go back to my graduation from university more than four decades ago. Mr. Chairman, I graduated from university four decades ago, but I'm actually a lot younger than I feel. Our graduation speaker was the late Saburo Okita. 
He was an economist of world repute and later became the foreign minister of Japan. Almost all that he said was completely alien to me. I was a graduate engineer eager to pursue a career in research and possibly academics despite being born into a business family. Our origins as a family were humble. We are from a small village, Pallathur, not very far from here. Seeds of business progress were sown in Myanmar and the ASEAN four generations and over a century ago. Okita's graduation address was centered around a new global order which emphasized friendship and economic cooperation between countries in the world, those developed and those that were not. He spoke about the emergence of the ASEAN nations and their aspiration towards economic and social growth. Many years later, since that graduation day, and upon reflection, perhaps caused by greater wisdom, if I put India into this equation, the Asia-Pacific region has gained much economic strength and a new social order. Today, the region accounts for more than a third of global trade and development and progress commensurate with the growth aspirations of a very talented populace, some of them amongst you. The Asian region continues to grow more rapidly than the rest of the world. While this is so, and as young graduates, I'm sure you've had also time to reflect. The world has also been engulfed in potential trade wars, often protectionist, changing geopolitical and socioeconomic equations, often difficult to fathom or comprehend. Sadly, parts of the world experience a horrifying spiral of violence and counter-violence, death and destruction, possibly caused by widening gaps between the haves and the have-nots. Demographics are changing, with much younger people coming into the workforce and an aging population that needs to be cared for across the world, and India is no exception. Climate change is a reality as we are experiencing in our country with diminishing fundamental needs such as potable water and clean air. It is this world that seemingly presents many difficulties, but to all of you in front of me here, it should also present opportunities to address them in a sustainable manner. Developed nations grew on the backdrop of innovation. Free flow of ideas and talent, the spirit of free enterprise, and the efficient use of natural resources. India cannot lag behind. The challenge will be that of human capital, and thus the need for many institutions of education, enterprise, economic, and social development. Graduates of IIM Trichy, you step into this world, a world of enormous need and great opportunity. Now superimpose science and technology on this. Newer opportunities emerge across India and the world. The challenge before you is to navigate this world of opportunity in such a dynamic and rapidly changing environment. And so my only advice to you is to not to look upon your careers 
just in terms of jobs. Seek those that could provide you path-breaking opportunities while building enduring institutions. As I embarked on my career four decades ago, I too faced many challenges. My dreams of pursuing a career in research and academia possibly was curtailed by the untimely demise of my father, who was more than a friend to my younger brother and I. My brother and I carry this learning to our children. Thus, force of circumstance brought me into the family business. Naturally, there was some trepidation, but there was support from a larger family. Expectations were high relative to learning the ropes of business, caring for a mother and a sibling, and navigating through institutions of both business and family. On reflection today, both over my academic training and business experience, my learnings were immense. And I wish to share some of these learnings with you. The first of my learnings is never to underestimate anyone. Never to underestimate anyone. The setting was the first quiz in my fluid mechanics class at graduate school, where we were examined in a very typical open book exam. So we were examined on our conceptual clarity and analytical ability. I was relieved to make a little more than class average. I know how that feeling is with many of you when you're graded on the bell curve. So it was a difficult quiz. I was relieved. I made a little more than class average. And the guy sitting next to me, my neighbor, was an ungainly, portly figure. He was five-sided. He had limited communication ability. He was ignored by fellow students and perhaps often by faculty, including me. But he was the only one who got the perfect score. So very sheepishly, I exchanged notes with him. And he took me through the fundamentals of where I went wrong and where I overlooked a simple concept in its entirety. Soon, our professor called him up because he was the only one who made the perfect score, and he asked him to explain. And although his communication ability was limited, he went up to the blackboard and he provided an explanation which even blew my professor off his seat. And therefore, from that day, my respect for him grew. Our friendship over 40 years still remains. And I realized I should never, ever underestimate anyone at any time. The second is what makes my life very fulfilling. And this is about learning to learn. My learnings in the past and every day, and even in this wonderful day amidst all of you, I realized amongst the graduating class was, is a relative of a colleague who served in our group for more than 30 years. And he sent me an email. This young man, who is, I think, my son or son-in-law, is graduating today. And I was very touched because his aspirations for succeeding generations are being fulfilled. 
And interestingly enough, amongst the executive program, there is also one gentleman who's evaluated me in various circumstances and has served as a judge in many of our company events. And I was absolutely surprised to see him here. Actually, quite frankly, I did not know that you were actually doing an MBA because if you did not, I thought you already had one, and that's why we invited you. But anyway, I've had very good teachers at school, at universities, but colleagues across hierarchies in institutions of business and in public life, be it workers on the shop floor or colleagues in boardrooms, I've had warmth of family and fondness of friendship from people from all walks of life. I learned from children of all ages and even from pets. And they've all added to the repository of not just knowledge, but love and compassion, leadership, and above all, responsible citizenship. We're all blessed with such an opportunity, provided we are willing to learn to learn so that we understand how and why things happen rather than wondering what happened. The third is to build lasting relationships. This is a natural progression of learning but to me, it's a lot more. Most of us believe that lasting relationships are built at a young age. True as it may be, if we add to this fairness, trust, a cultural understanding in a world that is so connected and open today, empathy, and it goes beyond expected dimensions. To me, these are beyond transactions. Transactions that are often taught in finance courses and with investment bankers and things like that. Transactions which, is, which are so typical of hard-nosed business. Because many times in business, winning transactions matter. These victories are momentary. They provide temporary moments of joy, but often do little to nurture trust and sound values. Time and again, within India and across the world, be it with alliance partners, joint ventures, or even in commercial matters, building relationships has stood me well. Always to think beyond the immediate issues bring some magnanimity, leave a little bit on the table, and look at future sustainability, which helps gain trust. Now, all these three learnings have some prerequisites. And the prerequisites that you all read about, the prerequisites which are in the halls of various institutions, including the IIM, but the prerequisites in our institution of business is we call the five lights. The light of integrity, to value professional and personal integrity above all else, to earn trust with every action. The light of passion, to have a healthy desire to achieve stretch goals while striving constantly to improve and to be energetic always. The light of quality, to take ownership of work and unfailingly meet high standards that is expected of us and also are set by us and to take pride in excellence. The light of respect, to respect the dignity of every individual to be open and to be transparent. 
and provide everyone equal opportunities to progress. And rather than saying, I did it, is to say, we did it together. The light of responsibility. Be responsible citizens. Make a difference to the environment and change lives for the better. And do this with all humility. So to all you graduates, while growth, efficiency, and building capability is vital to a business institution, strong values are vital to visionary leadership. And this will make a huge difference in your lives and in the lives of others. As you leave the portals of this fine institution, you have a world of opportunity ahead, seeking your unique skills and capabilities. You are a privileged part of our aspiring nation. Do not wither it away. May your lives and careers be most rewarding and fulfilling, and may you take obstacles in your stride. Simply stated, have a vision for yourselves. Control your own destiny because your security, your security is only in your ability. Your security is only in your ability. And the Indian Institute of Management has built a part of it. So I'm certain that you will do yourselves, your families, your institution here, and our nation proud. God bless and thank you for this occasion, ladies and gentlemen. Chairman will present a memento to the Chief Guest, Sri M. M. Margappan.